So in terms of setting apart candidates um, at the resume stage, um, a really clear, succinct resume is important um, to me. I know that within the HR world, within um, the employment world, people have different preferences. Um, but I think it's important to, to, you don't need to feel that you need to put a, a, a six page document forward when you're having trouble filling two or three pages. It's important to just list the key highlights. And I think that information is is readily available in terms of what the, the key information is. Um, but highlight some of the, the, the achievements that you have, the things that you're proud of. And I think that um, being able to to demonstrate what you've what you've done well perhaps in your in your university some of the projects that you've been involved with so when i um when i approached applying for graduate positions i knew that i wanted to work for government so in terms of finding what jobs were available that was quite easy and that there's a APS graduate portal um i they all take a similar structure in terms of uh recruiting graduates so for us, something that would make you stand out as an applicant um, really is looking at how well you structure your behavioural responses to your application. So structuring your STAR response, so uh, situation, task, actions and results in a really clear and concise way. Use some paragraphs around that process as well and really make sure you're focusing on one specific example. So don't give us a general I do this and I do this really well, actually give us an example of when you put these things into place. That will really make you stand out and give people go, oh, OK, I want to learn a little bit more about who this person is and what they can offer us. And I think people can often get quite caught up in, I don't know what they're looking for or I'm not, I'm not really sure how I should answer this. But if you really just give it a, a good shot, um, it sounds really simple, but if you just give it a, a good shot, your resume will speak for itself and that's got kind of what your experience is, what you've done, and if you can mirror that to your, or marry that to your application, if you get through to the next stage then and get to an interview, it really then is about going, okay, we have some of the skills that we're looking for, we want to see who you are as a person now and how well you would fit into our team. And I think often that can be a quite scary part. Um, going, oh, I've got to go sit for an interview in front of a panel. But actually, if you can try and remember that if you've got to that stage, you've actually got a lot of those skills that we are looking for. And this is just about we wanting to know who you are that um, yeah, can take a bit of pressure off and help people um, get through that stage. So at an interview, it's not a bad thing if you're nervous. Um, we understand that. Um, and it shows that you're really genuinely interested in this role. Um, so for us, it, being on time is important. Um, you know, taking some care in your presentation um, to show that, that you're interested. So again, if there's any way that you can find out um, anything about the organisation in terms of their, their professional dress standards so that you can align um, your, your outfit for the interview um, to, to align with the company, I think that's a really important tip. Um, and and just be genuine. Um, just don't don't try and second guess what we're trying to hear. Answer the questions as honestly as you can. Um, and also don't be afraid to ask questions because the interview is not just about the company finding out about a candidate. It's an opportunity for you to find out about the company because as good as the job sounded in the on the ad, it might not be right for you and this is the time for you to find out. Like I would definitely, in terms of the questions that they asked, you know, definitely tailored. Um, the job. Um, I think the main the main lesson that I took away from my interviews and things like that, when they were, what they were looking for, was um, was definitely passion for the uh, for the position that you're going into. So once you get to the interview stage, um, it's definitely uh, a they're, they're not looking for like the run of the mill grad who's applied for ten different programs to try and get a job. They're looking for a person who's actually interested in their department. With the recruitment processes, they are all going to be really different. Um, public sector, um, I guess, have a quite strict guideline around what we need to see and what we need you to do um, because it is a merit-based process. Um, so for DCSI, you will be required to do a application which will have usually around four um, behavioural questions that you need to answer and then provide a copy of your resume. 
Um, sometimes, depending on the role, you will need to provide a copy of your transcript as well, but that's not always the case at the application stage. Um, in different organisations, you might need to provide a two-page cover letter answering certain criteria. Um, so yeah, they are going to vary. I think it's just really important to actually take a bit of time to read exactly what each of those organisations are looking for, because we often see with our applications, people try and fit information that they've put into a cover letter into their behavioural questions, and that doesn't work. So yeah, just make sure you read the, the questions and answer what they actually are looking for. If you attach a cover letter to our application, you almost, you almost get like a little bit of a half cross because it's like, well, we've told you we don't want a cover letter, don't provide one for us. So yeah, just read instructions. <laughs> So in terms of recruitment, the, the lead times can, can vary considerably. Um, and some organisations are better at others than, than having a timely recruitment process. So DCSI will recruit all year round, depending on what the needs are for a business unit. And that could be um, a whole range of different positions from a um, graduate kind of intake role um, to a higher level position. DCSI also has a graduate program, which they run every year, which will usually commence end of January, beginning of February each year. So that's a really good opportunity for people who are finishing off their degree to um, come into work for our department. Applications for that open usually around August the, the year before. So I guess it's usually around August that you should start looking um, especially if you're interested in coming to do something like our graduate program, which can be a little bit daunting and it's a little bit hard because often you're still finishing your degree at that point in time. But um, yeah, we will open applications in August. We usually finish shortlisting uh, an initial shortlist round around September and then October you start to um, get the business units to come together and look for the graduates that they're um, interested in, who have the skills that they're looking for. You would then sit for an interview process with them and then have an offer made as to whether you're successful or not by Christmas to start then in um, end of January. So it is, they can be quite lengthy processes. Um, so we, especially with the graduate program, we often get a lot of applicants coming through, so it does take a bit of time. But I think in general as well, people shouldn't be too concerned. It usually takes around a six to eight week time frame from when you put your application in to when that position is filled. So what I'm talking about here is how I went through and got my job uh, with the, in the Department of Defence's graduate program. Now, every single Australian public service, that is the Canberra Public Service uh, graduate program, runs a little bit differently. So what I've, about, what I've got to say might be a little bit different from other people's experiences. But basically, the programs all start in about late February. Some of them start in about late February. DODs does, particularly the big ones like Department of Defence and Foreign Affairs. They take in... They have the most applicants, uh, DOD has, and DOD has a lot of positions on offer, so that's one of the reasons, whereas uh, Foreign Affairs, I think, doesn't have that many positions, but they are extremely popular. But they all start in sort of, you want to start looking at about January. You want to go on to, there's an APS website, uh, with, uh, and you can, with a, with a section on jobs, and they do have a section that's just on graduate schemes. It's also, if you know you want to, or you think you'd like to work for a specific department, whether it's AGs or Department of Agriculture, go onto the website, there's a career section, They'll have, a grad, they'll have a graduate programs uh, section that you can read through. Uh, follow that information. And they've done, this hundred, they've done this scores of times for hundreds if not thousands of people. So they're generally, with some exceptions in my experience, but they're generally quite, you know, they tell you what you need to know when, you, when, the, period, when the application period opens, when it closes. So with mine, I think Defence opened in, it might have been late February, early March, this, about then. So looked on there, you read through all the criteria, you put in your application. Now I think the first stage for me was uh, submit the CV, the, the resume, but you also have to answer a th that you usually, it's basically testing how well you can write a one page memo. So there's the usual questions like, tell us about a time you had to exercise leadership skills, tell us about a time you had to work in a difficult group situation. There'll be a few questions like that, uh, might be a thousand pages, th sorry, a thousand words all up. Um, so you've got to do that. Then every, and every, obviously they're all a bit different. Then uh, you send all that through and you hopefully hear back from them. When you hear back, in my case it was, we want you to do some online, it's called psychometric testing, it's pattern recognition, 
uh, addition, multiplication, basic mathematics, uh, and also some uh, language recognition skills. So you go through and do that. If you do well enough there, then you go through to, I forgot what it's called, it's an online written assessment. It's basically they send you, say, a policy document, and they ask you some questions about that, and you have, say, an hour and a half to fill out to answer those five questions and get that through to them. And I'm assuming that's just sort of thing like testing what sort of work you can produce under a time pressure element. And then if you get through that stage a month or two later, they send you off to what's called an assessment centre. Um, and from there you've got... Uh, mine was, you know, it was particular to DOD. So you had... Um, uh, you had you, you rocked out there, you registered, there was a group activity element, there was an individual interview element, there was a small written element, and so you had to write something and then present it, and that was recapitulating the online written assessment mostly. And there's also, this was never said, but with everyone who was there, and I said it, took it as a given that from the moment you walk into the moment you walk out, you're under some sort of observation. They're looking to see how you interact with others, how you interact with people who might be your future employers, your future bosses. Um, so it's worth remembering that and acting professionally during those sort of situations. Um, so that was how my process worked. But I know they all have different elements of some of them don't have a, some of them have a separate individual interview. And that, well, I also got an interview with Industry Innovation and Science, and I went straight from with them the online written assessment to the interview. So they all work slightly differently. So you go to the the, the best thing to do is go onto the website or look at the APS register website and look at that and read through the process if it's available and that should tell you what you need to know. So the best thing to do is to start looking at these things in say January of 2017, so for next year for argument's sake. You start looking at where you want to go, you look at what's available and then you start working out sort of a timeline of rates. And bear in mind these applications, it's not something you can spit out in half an hour. You have to actually sit down and think about it if you want to actually get considered. So I'm not saying you have to spend days and days on every one but it's, it's not the sort of thing you... This isn't university anymore. Okay, you could do it the night before and throw it in and get 55%, but this is potentially a future career. Do you want to do that? That's what you have to ask yourself. So at Cobham, um, we don't have a specific requirement around GPA for, for most of our roles within the organisation. Um, certainly if, if you've excelled, then celebrate that and, and let us know. Um, but there's certainly um, much more consideration given to the, the whole package that we see within your resume. Um, don't, don't be afraid to still put an application forward. Um, there may be times if, if we do have a role that's targeted at graduates that we use that as a component of how to, how to decide on shortlisting candidates. Um, but you don't know who the competition is on the day, so don't, don't ever be afraid to, to put forward your application. Certainly for a Cobham position that you see advertised, generally there won't be any reference to the, um, a requirement around GPA score. The process involved in getting my new job was um, seeing online that applications were open for Supreme Court Associates um, for all judges. And then I sort of researched the judges and saw who I thought I would be most compatible with. And then it was a matter of contacting their PA and secretary and sending them my resume and cover letter. And then hearing nothing for quite a while and then sort of being called in for an interview um, which was done over the phone. Um, and then, yeah, hearing back within two weeks as well, which was pretty exciting. And that was at the start of this year. So that made coming back to Australia after exchange a bit easier. <laughs> I think with the, with the transcript and, and what your GPA is, um, it is something that would be looked upon. It's not something, I guess, would, that would be the first point of call to go, what was their GPA, what was their score. So we would look at that in the concepts of who you are as a whole person, how you've answered your application um, and things like that, but it's not a deal breaker. Bear in mind, a lot of these graduate programs uh, for the assessment centres will expect you to fly into state. They might, whether it's Melbourne or Canberra or Sydney. I was lucky, Department of Defence runs theirs in, I think, most if not all of the capitals. So there was one in Adelaide that I was able to go to and that was fine, but some of them will expect you to travel into state. And they'll, some of them will pay for accommodation and flights, some of them won't. So just bear that in mind. Um, I wouldn't say that, again, don't cut that option out just because of it, but just because that possibility exists. But just something, it's just something to bear in mind.